Hi, Jamie Davis, the pod medic here at the Public Health Preparedness Summit in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm joined by my good friend Rick Rosati from the Mitigation Journal. And Rick, we've got some amazing structures that really change the way we provide care following a disaster. Yeah, that's right. Behind us are several examples of pre-hospital or out-of-hospital tents for emergency purposes. And we used to talk about switching from standard of care to a sufficiency of care during times of crisis or disaster. That is going from what we do every day in medicine to what just needs to be done or what can be done during a crisis situation. But as these shelters evolve into really just amazing field hospital level quality, we are able to maintain that standard of care throughout an emergency crisis or disaster situation. These structures are simply amazing to watch them go up in less than a minute. Yeah, they go up very quickly and they provide all of the resources needed. So they have power supply, they have lighting, they have um, resources and, and locations. So you can build a modular hospital center with, with x-ray unit, portable x-ray units built into it, um, brought in and rolled into these, these tents and uh, full examination suites, surgical centers, uh, emergency departments, whatever you need. And none of it happens without training and education. And the knowledge to put these things together is one thing, but the knowledge and education to utilize them properly is entirely another, which is why we're here at the Public Health Emergency Preparedness Summit in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, and preparedness is the key, Rick, because you really do need to practice with these tools before you need them. Uh, it's great to have the trailer out back of the hospital or in your uh, county parking lot, but if somebody isn't opening that trailer up periodically, and I mean more frequently than just once a year, but periodically opening it up and getting the materials out and saying how do we implement this if a disaster strikes our community then you're going to be hard pressed to really meet the needs of your community and you'll be only maybe providing sufficiency of care and not standard of care. And simply purchasing the, the product Jamie and letting it go to waste go to sit in the back of the garage what have you until it's needed is not really being prepared that's just spending money you really want to be prepared follow your emergency planning uh, training and preparedness guidelines and go through these things where there's so many knowledgeable vendors here that can really walk you through any aspect of what needs to be done one of the great examples is the centers for disease control and prevention which is represented here very very well with i think we counted seven booths the other day seven from, booths uh, that are representing different aspects of the cdc's preparedness uh, support for local communities so it's not just the technology or the physical structure, it's having the right knowledge at the right time delivered by the right people to get the job done. Well, and a lot of these a lot of these vendors not only provide the product, but they provide the support. They provide opportunities and aspects of training. And of course, like you said, there are other vendors here that are consultants that are more than qualified to provide a high level of training and uh, preparedness uh, demonstration for communities to, so that they can make sure that the tools that they have selected for their community preparedness are actually the right tools for the job. And that's really what the conference theme is all about, is supporting public health and healthcare preparedness through innovation and integration and that's right really why we're here yeah so stay tuned for more segments like this one coming from uh, my channels on the MedicCast at medicast.tv we'll also be putting out all of these things on the individual channels over at promednetwork.com of course mitigation journal is here uh, I'm here with the nursing show as well Ann Robinson's here representing the EMS garage and all of those programs are going to be interviewing some of the top leadership over the next couple of days here in the exhibit hall at the public health preparedness summit so stay tuned there's a lot more to come and you'll want to be watching for more videos like this one both short videos and longer panel discussions with some of our experts Rick uh, why don't you close this out Hey, thank you for joining us here at the uh, ProMed Medical Network. My name is Rick Rosati uh, for Jamie Davis, the Pod Medic, Medicast. Uh, this is Mitigation Journal, the All Hazards Podcast. Stay safe, everybody.